custom model for our application, we start with a pre-trained language model and fine tune it on our own dataset. This used to be fine until we reached the large language model regime and started working with models such as GPT, Llama, Vicuna, etc. Now, these LLMs are quite bulky and so fine tuning a model for different applications such as summarization or reading comprehension needs deploying the model for each application. And the size of these models is only increasing almost on a weekly or monthly basis. So the deployment of these bulky LLMs is getting increasingly challenging. Now one solution proposed for this problem is adapters. Adapters are trainable additional modules plugged into the neural network, mostly transformers. And during fine tuning, the parameters of only these adapter modules are updated with the pre-trained module frozen. Because adapters are additional parameters, they introduce latency during inference. For a batch size of 32 and a sequence length of 512 and a small half a million parameter model, fine-tuned LoRa model takes 149 milliseconds for inference, but with adapters, it's two or three percent higher. So how does LoRa achieve this feat? Let's find out in this video. Now before that, I would like to give a quick shout out about our X account, where we share high impact papers and research news from top AI labs from both academia and from industry. If you wish to keep up to date with AI every single day, just hit the follow button on X. LoRa stands for low rank adaptation. So what does that mean? For any neural network architecture, let's not forget that the weights of the network are just large matrices of numbers. All matrices come with some property called the rank. The rank of a matrix is the number of linearly independent rows or columns of that matrix. To understand it, let's take a simple 3x3 matrix. The rank of this simple 3x3 matrix at the top is 1. Why? Because the first and the second columns are redundant as they are just multiples of the third column. In other words, the two columns are linearly dependent and don't bring any meaningful information. Now, if we simply change one of the values to say 70, the rank becomes 2, as we now have two linearly independent columns. Knowing the rank of a matrix, we can do rank decomposition of a given matrix into two matrices. Now going back to our example of 3x3 three three matrix, it can simply be written as the product of two matrices, one with the dimension 3x1 and the other with the dimension 1x3. Notice that we only have to store six numbers after decomposition instead of the nine numbers in the 3x3 three three matrix. This may sound less, but in reality, the neural network weights have a very high dimension of say 1024 by 1024. And so using a rank of two, it boils down to a really small number of values that we need to store and hence that we need to multiply when we actually want to do some computation, which is a lot of reduction in computation. So would it not be nice if these weights actually have a low rank so that we can work with the rank decomposition instead of the entire weights. It turns out that's indeed the case with pre-trained models as shown by this earlier work. They empirically show that common pre-trained models have a very low intrinsic dimension. In other words, there exists a low dimension reparameterization that is as effective for fine tuning as the full parameter space. Let's say we are starting with a pre-trained model with weights W0 
After fine tuning, let the weights be updated to W0 plus delta W. If the pre-trained model has low rank weights, it would be a fair hypothesis to assume that the fine-tuned weights are also low rank. Laura goes with this assumption. Because delta W is low rank, we can now decompose that matrix into two low rank matrices A and B, whose product BA leads to delta W. And lastly, fine-tuning becomes the pre-trained weights W0 plus BA instead of W0 plus delta W as it's one and the same. With that perspective, if we start training the model with input X, the input passes through both the pre-trained weights and the rank decomposition matrices A and B. The weights of the pre-trained model remain frozen, but we still consider the output of the frozen model during training. The output of both the frozen model and the low rank model are summed up to obtain the output latent representation, H. Mathematically, it's represented by this one line equation where the input X is multiplied with both W0 and BA matrix and summed up to obtain the hidden representation H. Now you may ask, what about latency during inference? If we slightly modify the above equation, we can notice that we can merge or add the weights BA to the pretend weights W0. So for inference, it's this merged weight that is deployed thereby overcoming the latency bottleneck. One of the other concerns is deployment of LLMs as they are quite bulky, say about 50 GB or 70 GB. Let's say we have to fine tune for two tasks, namely summarization and translation. We don't have to deploy the entire model every time we fine tune. We can simply fine tune the LoRa layers specific for the task, for example, summarization, and deploy the model for summarization. Similarly, we can deploy LoRa layers specific for translation. And thus, LoRa overcomes both the deployment and latency bottlenecks or problems faced by modern day large language models. In terms of applying for transformers, we all know that transformers have two main modules, which are multi-headed self-attention and multi-layer perceptron or MLPs. The self-attention modules are composed of query, key, value, and output weights. In this paper, they have limited their study to only adapting the attention weights for downstream tasks and frozen the MLP modules, so they are not trained in downstream tasks, which means that LoRa is just applied to the self-attention module. Now, we have been talking about using LoRa for adaptation. One of the key parameters in LoRa is the rank, which is something that we have to choose. So, what is the optimal rank for LoRa? It turns out, to everyone's surprise, a rank as small as 1 is sufficient for adapting both the query and the value matrices. However, when adapting the query alone, it needs to have a larger rank of say 4 or 8 or even 64. Moving on to how we can practically use LoRa, there is this official implementation from Microsoft, which is released as LoRaLib and is available under the MIT license. 
Another option to use LoRa is the Hugging Face repo called PEFT, which stands for Parameter Efficient Fine Tuning. And PEFT is available under the Apache 2 license. PEFT also has a few other implementations, such as prefix tuning, prompt tuning, and LoRa is one of the earliest implementations in the library. I think that pretty much covers the important bits about LoRa. I hope this video was useful in understanding about the functioning of the LoRa model. I hope to see you in my next. Until then, uh, take care.